Welcome, friends. Welcome to the End Time Hour on Eternal Radio. Friends, when the Lord woke me up to the truth of our world, I was in a state of shock. Prior to that time, you see, before 2009, I had no clue at all that all the end time prophecies recorded in the Bible are converging with current events today. The Bible really is like looking at the daily news. I remember waking up to the fact that our world was controlled by people shrouded in darkness, hidden behind our politicians, banks, corporations and the mainstream media, pulling the strings and manipulating world events in order to implement their satanically inspired goal to control the planet. Friends, it sounds like something out of a movie or a comic book, doesn't it? But the fact is, friends, these fictional stories of good versus evil are all inspired from the innate understanding that God knitted into our hearts when we were first created in our mother's womb. And every human on the planet knows all too well the inner struggle between good and evil. Everyone knows that there is a battle raging between good and evil, a battle for the world and a battle for each and every single life on the planet. And everyone knows we need a hero to come and save us from the impending doom. Many will deny the reality that this good versus evil is the age-old battle between God and the devil, and that the hero of the story is in fact the one who took upon himself the punishment for us all and humbly sacrificed himself on that tree. God became man for us. That hero is our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ who will set up his kingdom and will take his rightful place and reign upon the earth during the millennial reign and where he will have thrown that lying deceiver, the devil, that supplanter, that deceiver of the brethren and that deceiver of the nations into the bottomless pit where he will be imprisoned for 1,000 years. Oh, hallelujah. Friends, let us understand what is going on here. Currently, Satan has jurisdiction over the earth, the authority given to him by us, mankind. Yes, friends, we handed it over to him, hook, line and sinker on that fateful day in the Garden of Eden when we disobeyed God. Remember, Satan was there on planet Earth, having been cast out of heaven. He was just waiting for an opportune moment to poison mankind with his lies. Man was deceived on that day by the serpent of old, deceived into believing that he could become like God. The same sin Lucifer himself, the son of the morning, committed and saw him expelled from his lofty position. Now that's what he, Satan, continues to do to deceive mankind into believing that they are God. In other words, deceiving them into believing they are answerable to no higher power and certainly not answerable to a holy God. God who totally detests sin in all of its forms. Friends, Satan wants this planet and he wants it so bad and the only way he can have rule over it is through the sin sick and deceived human race. Satan needs a body so he can rule over our world and that is of course where the Antichrist comes into play and many Antichrists have been and gone already and continue to be on this planet now even as I speak. But there will be, friends, one at the time of the end who would have been groomed in the darkest of places on the earth, in places that exist already like Bohemian Grove, where the elite entertain themselves under the shadow of a stone owl god amidst flaming Christian crosses and a human sacrifice effigy. Sounds like a fantasy, doesn't it? But tragically, it's not. Friends, it was at Bohemian Grove that a planning meeting took place for the Manhattan Project, the project that led to the creation of the first atomic bomb. Just three years after that Bohemian Grove meeting, the first bomb was dropped over Hiroshima, Japan, unleashing hell upon an innocent civilian population, killing approximately 80,000 people and injuring a further 70,000. Three days later, the second bomb was dropped over Nagasaki, Japan. 35,000 were killed and 60,000 further were injured. Friends, there is no question at all that great evil lies at the heart of Bohemian Grove and other satanic meeting spots like it around the globe, where the elite, where the rich and the famous, where those who have sold their souls to this dark world gather together and where evil is plotted. 
But friends, we have to ask what other evil events might have been plotted there and if Armageddon and other end time battles will be hatched out at places like Bohemian Grove. But let's not deceive ourselves, friends. Let's not deceive ourselves. It's not only the Antichrist that will be empowered by Satan to wreak havoc on the earth. No, friends, it will be all those who choose to ignore the call of Christ in these last days. Those who refuse to seek him now while he may be found and to repent for their sins in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. But tragically, many who call themselves Christians will actually be messengers of Satan too. And they too will be enlisted by the dark Lord to do his bidding and to persecute those who truly love and know Christ. I have personally received messages myself from those who profess to be Christian who say I'm going to hell. And friends, I honestly, I honestly pray for those who speak such judgment upon his people and have no idea that they themselves are on shaky ground. Jesus said in Luke 6, 28, bless those who curse you and pray for those who insult you. But friends, some folks just can't believe it. They can't believe that there's a plot to take over the world by men and women who are magnetised to the evil one through their own sinful and wicked condition. Friends, without God, we are all in the same boat. Without the redemptive work of the cross of Jesus Christ in our own lives, we are all the same as the next wicked despot. So let's not be under any illusion that we are somehow holier than thou. No, all our righteousness, friends, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord Jesus Christ. No, friends, we've all been tainted by sin and we all need a glorious saviour. But Christians should understand this plot to take over the world more than anyone else, simply because it's all been laid out in the scriptures to the prophets and apostles through divine revelation. The fact is, friends, and I've said this so many times before, in order to take control of the planet, one must first bow down to Satan. That's why Satan took the opportunity to offer the world to Jesus if he would just bow down and worship him but praise God friends the sinless son of God knew better and refused immediately citing the scripture worship the Lord your God and serve him only so then friends it is of vital importance that we ourselves do exactly the same worship the Lord and serve him only and then when Satan comes to knock on our door he will find nothing in us that will be tempted to submit to him and to his evil lure So this is why, friends, when people get to the top, there is evil waiting in the shadows. When we investigate, we quickly find satanic activity like Bohemian Grove or the Skull and Bone Society, where nothing less than satanic and pagan worship and all kinds of disturbing practices are engaged in. Because that's where they get their power for global control, directly from the devil, for who the scriptures say is the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4. But still, friends, people find all this hard to believe. One reason, I think, is that there's a misunderstanding concerning just how wicked a person can be. Remember in Genesis 6, 5, though, it says, The Lord God saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Friends, the Lord God saw how great the wickedness was, how great it had become, and that every single inclination, every thought of their hearts was continually wicked all the time. Friends, this is the state of the human heart without God, and it gets worse for those who want power for their own ends. No doubt you've heard the phrase, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. So then, friends, let us have an understanding of evil. Let us have an understanding of just how wicked and depraved sin is. And let us also, friends, have an understanding of how wicked and depraved we would be without the Lord Jesus Christ filling us continuously with his life and holiness every day. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your precious blood that cleanses and washes me from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. So then, friends, let us then, let us put on the full armour of God, as Paul writes in Ephesians 6, so that we will be enabled to withstand in the evil day. Because, friends, you better believe it, the day is evil. The day is evil, and it's getting more evil with every passing day. So let us stand with the full armour of God. And having done all, as Paul says, having done all to stand. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Eternal Radio. Sounds to energize your faith. Friends, there is a battle on for the hearts and minds of the people. There is a battle on for our world and it couldn't be more clearer than it is today. The populist movement that has sprung up all over the Western world and saw the UK voting to withdraw from the European Union and also saw Trump elected into office is creating a perfect storm for the globalists. They are seizing upon this populist uprising and are using it to wield their tyrannical power. Friends, let us not be fooled. The globalists globalists will not be beaten. They may have taken a hit, but they are coming back with a vengeance. The beast has been bitten and now it's angry and it will show its true colours. The globalists propaganda arm, the mainstream media, is in overdrive, desperately censoring the internet in an attempt to silence the voices of those who are awakened to the current situation. But what gets me, friends, still what gets me so frustrated is that still there are so many many totally asleep. So many people are asleep, friends. They just don't get it. They're totally oblivious. To me, friends, it's like living through World War II and somehow being totally unaware of it. It would be like walking through a burning London the morning after the Blitz, chatting to a friend about a movie they watched last night, totally engaged in conversation while stepping over the carnage and rubble. But that's what's happening now, friends. A massive war is on, but people walk on oblivious and many don't even care when you tell them. It seems they don't care as long as they have their little comforts handed out to them by the system to keep them occupied in that imagined world. Their smartphone, their computer games, their stuff, their material possessions. Then they really couldn't care less. The masses, including many churchgoers, continue on like zombies, stepping over the destruction of our civilization, laughing as they go, totally preoccupied. Who cares about the injustice today? Who cares about the slaughter of the innocent children across the planet, ripped out from their mother's womb by their murderers, children sacrificed on the satanic altar of self? It's a genocide, friends, happening right under our noses that almost pales the evils of Hitler into insignificance. Evil prevails in our streets. Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, who, by the way, Hillary Clinton publicly declared she looked up to, said this in her proposed American baby code, which was intended to become law. The most merciful thing that a family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. Can you believe it, friends? And let us not forget that globalist Hillary Clinton proudly defended partial birth, late-term abortion during the presidential debates. I actually heard of some Christians that supported her. What on earth is going on? Friends, the truth is, there is a plan afoot to depopulate the earth by the globalists, and that's a conspiracy theory for those who want to live in that imagined utopia. The masses are suffering from cognitive dissonance, a mental conflict that occurs when a person's belief system is contradicted by new information. The tension that the conflict creates is relieved by either rejecting or avoiding the new information. Totalitarian regimes are successful when their subjects reach that confused state of consciousness. They can get up to just about anything and most people will just carry on scrolling through their Facebook feeds. This is a perfect situation for the globalists and a perfect situation for the devil. But there is a plot, friends, to depopulate the earth and we only need to look at the Georgia Guidestones, the globalists' ten commandments for some clues to that. Yes, friends, there is a plan and it's in plain sight. The monument is made from six granite slabs with a capstone lying across the top of five of the slabs. Upon the Guidestones is engraved in eight languages a message. One. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Two, 
guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Three, unite humanity with a living new language. Four, rule passion, faith, tradition and all things with tempered reason. Five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Six, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Seven, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Eight, balance personal rights with social duties. Nine, prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. 10. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. According to this, friends, this is what the New World Order want. A global population under 500 million to control childbirth. A global world court. To have a global family with a one world government and to consider nature higher than ourselves. Charities come knocking on our doors, don't they? Save the birds, save nature, give to the research of cancer, which, by the way, there are so many cures for various kinds of cancer and many preventatives out there today. But the truth is big money is made by the pharmaceutical industry and they will do all they can to suppress information about cancer cures. Otherwise, they would go out of business. But have you ever had anyone knocking on your door to give to a pro-life group? I haven't, friends. Save the birds is fine, but save the babies is way too controversial. People today get more caught up saving wildlife, which I'm all for, by the way, or with the bad treatment of animals or the inhumane way animals get slaughtered, and then at the same time ignore the murder and slaughter of their own kind at the hands of these murderous baby killers, otherwise known as abortionists. This is crazy, isn't it? It's pure madness. Today, friends, you can save the birds, but if you want to save the babies, you're labelled an extremist bigot by the controlled mainstream media, which in turn is lacking up by those lemmings who follow everything they say as gospel. But friends, today the mainstream is pushing to shut down independent news sources and there's a purge going on right now as I speak. It's like the book burning days under the Nazis and the communist regimes. Since the populist movement sprung up, an unprecedented attack on free speech is taking place as people trust less in the mainstream media than ever before. CNN, who has been called out on numerous occasions as being fake news, is campaigning to have YouTube channels who champion liberty and truth to be shut down. But the purge has already begun. Since the 2016 election, tech giants Facebook, Google and Twitter have targeted conservative websites and pundits by cutting their social media traffic, blocking their stories from going viral and demonetizing videos and shutting down their accounts. In February, Google banned several more conservative channels. Bombard's Body Language was a very popular conservative channel that had 265,000 YouTube subscribers. Her channel was shut down due to her analysis of the Parkland High School student activists. She analysed David Hogg's Body Language, one of the high school anti-gun activist leaders. Because of this, YouTube shut her channel down. We are living, friends. We are living in George Orwell's 1984, but it has been far superseded. Google, friends, Google decides what you will hear and what you will see. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energise your faith. Nothing will be the same after the populist uprising has been crushed. Hillary Clinton, who continues to complain about losing the 2016 election and blame social media for her crushing defeat, is now calling for social media censorship by the mid-term elections. First it was the Russians' fault, now it's social media. But the truth is, friends, people are waking up to the smell of establishment coffee. The American people didn't choose Hillary, not because of Russian interference or because of social media. They didn't choose her because they've had enough of the globalist tyranny, lunatic liberalism and political correctness that defies all logic that she personifies. 
Hillary, who ironically used social media to call for this crackdown, tweeted, We should all care about how social media platforms play a part in our democratic process, because unless it's addressed, it will happen again. The midterms are in eight months. We owe it to our democracy to get this right and fast. The social media giants are fiercely working to de-platform, shadow ban and censor liberty advocates, populists, conservatives and Christians only. Shadow banning or stealth banning is the act of blocking a user or their content from an online community such that the user doesn't realise that they've been banned. By making a user's contributions invisible or less prominent to other members of the service, the hope is that in the absence of reactions to their comments, the problematic user will become bored or frustrated and stop posting content. Guerrilla journalist James O'Keefe recently exposed Twitter with undercover videos where Twitter engineers admitted that they shadow ban and suspend Trump supporters. Friends, it's here. Chinese communist style censorship is upon us and it will not stop at the internet. The globalists will be coming after anyone who doesn't play to that devilish tune. Some Christians ask, where is this persecution and the tribulation you warn of? But the truth is, friends, it will never come to those who compromise, who sit idly by Sunday after Sunday in a church building. It will never come to those who would rather be loved by the world than hated by it. But to be hated by the world proves that we are not of this world and that we are of Christ. And they hate us because they hate Christ. Jesus himself explains this in John 15. Jesus went on to say that they persecuted me and so they will persecute you. So we can compromise and join with the world and we'll be loved by the world and we'll never see the persecution that is coming for those who are true disciples of Jesus Christ. The choice is ours. We live in an anti-Christian world today and we had better wake up fast. A world that punishes Christian students for living out the tenets of their faith. Harvard University has just put a Christian group that operates at the university under a year-long probation because they asked one of our Bible course leaders who was engaging in a same-sex relationship to step down. Friends, we live in a world that allows for parents to brainwash their small innocent children into transgenderism. But parents who want to bring their children up in the ways of God are brandished as bigots and extremists. Today, Christian couples are refused adoption because they hold to biblical values. And at the same time, lesbian and gay couples are accepted without question, which tragically seems to be the case with the murder of the little adopted girl at the hands of her gay parent who called her Satan dressed in a baby grow. Now, friends, you tell me how this couple managed to get through the screening process. Meanwhile, God-fearing traditional parents, that's a man and a woman, who would have shown true parental love, get refused for being what one government-funded adoption agency calls retarded homophobes. Friends, the US honoured the life of Billy Graham as he lay in honour at the Capitol Rotunda. And wasn't it a rare event to hear Christ glorified as President Trump and others gave thanks for this servant of the Lord over the mainstream airwaves? But friends, the truth is, the truth is, friends, the mainstream won't be so generous at the passing of his son, Franklin Graham. You see, Franklin is living and ministering in a time that is much more hostile toward Christianity than ever before, and he is not remaining silent about the injustices that abound. Franklin is outspoken on LGBTQ and Islam and says that the lifestyles of LGBTQ people are sinful and that America is under attack by Muslims at home and abroad. And for this, Franklin Graham is said by Politico magazine to be dismantling the movement that his father built by rebranding evangelicalism as a belief system marked by fear of Muslims and homophobia. And last year, Canada tried to stop Franklin from preaching at an evangelistic event. The mayor of Vancouver was concerned about what he called Franklin Graham's extraordinarily derogative comments. And the first openly gay person to be ordained in a Canadian church asked this. 
why would they not invite a different evangelist? One that isn't controversial. Isn't controversial? Friends, the true gospel is controversial, but not, of course, for those churches who have embraced sin and have forsaken the truth of God's holy word. Now, opposition in the UK is growing too, to see the evangelical preacher banned from entering the UK, who the Guardian reports is accused of hate speech. Several MPs have urged the Home Secretary to consider refusing UK entry to Franklin Graham. Can you believe it? A pastor who particularly welcomes LGBT people, of course, said she is horrified that other local churches are inviting someone with this record of hate speech. Friends, can you see what's happening? Anti-Christian sentiment is rising, but scarily, not only from within government places, but also from within churches who have embraced the sin of this dark world. Those people who uncompromisingly stand by God's word are today being accused of hate speech. Franklin Graham is seeing opposition and persecution because he's refusing to bow to the politically correct spirit of this age that wants to stifle the voice of the church in this dark hour. And this kind of persecution, friends, is only set to continue for all those who choose to stand up against the tide of sin that is sweeping across our lands today. Today, friends, people desperately need to hear the full and uncompromising word of God. People need to know that they are lost in their sin and need saving from it. Shall we dare then, shall we dare to preach God's holy word today, not fearing the consequences? I pray, friends, I pray that the true church will rise up in this hour. And just as President Trump declared in his remarks at the Billy Graham Memorial Service, we pray that all across this land, the Lord will raise up men and women like Billy Graham. Oh, hallelujah. Friends, wasn't that something that President Trump would declare that? And we say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord. Let it be so. Hallelujah. Amen. Eternal Radio. Sounds to energize your faith. We'll be tested by the fire. Persecuted and reviled. Friends, I need your help to continue broadcasting End Time Hour on Eternal Radio. We are now living in the age that has allowed for a Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. Revelation 13:14. For he deceived all the people who belong to this world. Now, more than ever before, it is vital that we keep truth broadcasting around the planet. I'm simply asking you today to work with us in this great commission by texting ELCM02 followed by the amount you would like to donate. For example, ELCM02, £10, and simply sending that to the number 70070. That's 70070. To donate to Eternal Radio to make an impact today. God bless you. Yesterday's prophecies, today's news. Oprah Winfrey says she is waiting for sign from God to run for US president. Oprah Winfrey has said she is waiting for a sign from God to tell her to run in the 2020 US presidential election. The talk show host said she has been approached by billionaires offering to fund and run her campaign if she chose to run for the White House. I went into prayer, she said, of the calls and speculation around a possible run for president. I had people, wealthy billionaires, calling me up and saying, I can get you a billion dollars, I can run your campaign, she told US magazine People. Friends, I think I only mentioned last week on End Time Hour that I do hope Oprah Winfrey doesn't run. She will serve the globalists well and they're already jumping in to fund her campaign.
Now she's waiting for a sign. I think the best way to sum up Winfrey and the current climate is to quote what Mike Bickle, head of the International House of Prayer, spoke in a message way back in 2011 that aired on God TV. I never forgot that message, which also appeared in many newspapers at the time. Here's what Pastor Bickle said. The harlot Babylon is preparing the nations to receive the Antichrist. The harlot Babylon will be a religion of affirmation, toleration, no absolutes, a counterfeit justice movement. They will feed the poor, have humanitarian projects, inspire acts of compassion for all the wrong reasons. They won't know it. Beloved, they will be sincere many of them, but their sincerity will not in any way lessen the impact of their deception. The fact that they are sincere does not make their deception less damaging. I believe that one of the main pastors as a forerunner to the harlot movement is opera. She is winsome, she is kind, she is reasonable, she is utterly deceived, utterly deceived. A classy woman, a cool woman, a charming woman, but has a spirit of deception and she is one of the clear pastors, forerunners to the harlot movement. Now friends, it remains to be seen if opera runs for the 2020 presidency and if she does, what concerns me is that mega church members will vote her without a second thought. But regardless friends, whether she runs or not, we are at a tipping point. The populist movement has aggravated the globalists and they are fighting back hard. For them, opera would be the perfect person to get things right back on track. She may even accelerate their plans and her presidency could lead countless Christians into the great falling away as prophesied in scripture. Friends, let's stand firm in this hour. Stay awake, keep alert and make sure that our oil is burning brightly to take us through the darkness. Hallelujah. This nation is in a mess. Why Billy Graham's daughter believes his death could shake the church. Anne Graham Lott's daughter of famed evangelist Billy Graham believes that her father's death could help shake the church. Something that she said is desperately needed in the modern era. Lott's also revealed why she believes America is in such a mess. Telling WRAL TV that she believes the country and the church at large is missing the message of the gospel. Some churches, she said, have stopped showing people how to pray and read the Bible and in turn aren't bringing people into a relationship with Christ as the Bible implores. That's why this nation is in a mess. We've lost our focus. We've lost our message, she said. People go to church, but they're not getting what they're going for. Lots believes her father's death is an important reminder for the world to wake up and realise that tomorrow isn't promised and that each individual has an important decision to make. You need to decide now where you're going to spend eternity, she said. Music for your life with Eternal Radio. Friends, with all the darkness that is in this world, let's not lose sight of the light of Jesus Christ. It was prophesied of the Messiah that he would walk by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles among a people who dwelt in the land of the shadows of death. Upon those people, through the Messiah, it tells us, a great light would dawn. That prophecy in Isaiah 9 was fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Matthew 4, 14 says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Friends, isn't it amazing that the prophecies are so accurate right down to the very place, Galilee. Friends, the presence of darkness is not the absence of light. Let me say that again. The presence of darkness is not the absence of light. Now imagine if you've turned on a flashlight in a darkened room. 
It doesn't eradicate all the darkness, does it? But it beams a light wherever you point it. Now, that's what Jesus did. Jesus, being the light of the world, took light wherever he went. Now we know that Jesus' presence on the earth didn't eradicate all darkness. We know this because the Jews remained under Roman occupation. We know this because eventually Jesus was arrested and cruelly treated and hung on a cross to die. Now, Jesus is the light, but you know, Jesus said that we are the light too. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So as followers, we carry Jesus' light. That's an amazing thought, isn't it? Because we have Christ in us, we carry his light wherever we go. Philippians 2.15 says that we have become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the middle of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So friends, we shine the light of Jesus in a crooked and perverse generation. We shine the light of Jesus in the darkness of this world. Now it doesn't mean all the darkness goes away, but where we are, the darkness has to flee. Isn't that an amazing thought? So then, let's remember that today, no matter where we are, or even no matter what dark circumstances we are going through, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ will break out upon you and around you, dispelling all the darkness in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Friends, shall we pray together right now? Oh, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we glorify your mighty and precious name today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the light of the world. And thank you, Lord, that you said whoever follows you will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for that wonderful truth today. And Father God, I pray for all the listeners out there today that maybe are struggling with the darkness that is in this world, or maybe they are struggling with the darkness that is in their own heart or around them in their own lives. Maybe they're struggling with personal circumstances. Father God, I wanna pray right now for the listeners. I wanna pray, Father, that you would dispel the darkness, that they would know your wonderful, wonderful light today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I command all darkness to flee over you now, friend, as you listen to this broadcast. May you be set free from the power of darkness and gloriously walk in the wonderful light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray this in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world. Online, on tablet, on smartphone and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.